Hi guys, David here and welcome to BTech. And the bad news for tech fans just keeps coming. Last week we had news that some of the major component and software suppliers of the tech giant Huawei have ceased to do business with them, and effective immediately, thanks to Huawei being placed on the US government entity list. Companies placed on this list need to apply for a special permit if they wish to do business with American companies. Huawei are the world leaders in 5G technology at the moment, and this is a move to stop Huawei from providing the 5G infrastructure as the US government believes that the Chinese government can use Huawei equipment for spying. Being placed on the list means that companies such as Intel, Microsoft, Qualcomm, and most notably Google and Arm can no longer supply components to the Chinese firm. But now we're hearing about the inevitable retaliation from China, and for tech companies that want to do business with China, it's pretty bad. But before we get into it, let me say a big thank you to Direct Mobiles. They have over 24 years of award-winning customer service, and you can now check out their comparison tools to make sure you're gonna find the best possible deal on your new handset. Their link is in the video description below, or you can search directmobiles.co.uk. So last week, China's Cyberspace Administration issued a draft set of cybersecurity regulations. The draft stated that in order to improve the security and controllability of key information infrastructure and maintain national security, companies purchasing network products and services that affect or may affect national security will now need to evaluate the national security risk before doing so. So in a way, they're kind of creating their own entity list with any US company or, as the document states, any company at all required to undergo scrutiny from the administration. They say that the purpose of this is to promote the application of advanced technologies, enhancing fairness and transparency and protecting intellectual property rights. This draft is under public consultation for the next month, which I think is the Chinese leaving the door open in the hope that this madness will be sorted by then. Analysts say that Chinese officials have the flexibility to use these powers to counter the restrictions placed on Huawei as part of the trade war response. I think potentially with these restrictions in place on both sides, the incredible rate of advancement in technology that we've enjoyed over the last few decades is going to slow down. Huawei said that they do not want to build a new wall with regards to trade or technology. They say that we need an integrated global ecosystem which can help to promote faster technological innovation and stronger economic growth. I really hope that they can come to some kind of agreement quite soon because both sides are going to suffer. And it's not them who's going to suffer, it's us. It's been reported that the US ban on Huawei means that large portions of rural America could be left without any mobile services at all. Small companies run and control the telecoms equipment in those areas, and they currently use affordable telecoms equipment made by Huawei. Replacing it with expensive European equipment will cost each company hundreds of millions, and these smaller companies just can't afford to do it. Some help has been offered by the US government, a pool of $700 million, but many say that this is nowhere near enough. And if these companies are to survive, then the only way they're going to do it is by passing the cost onto the customer. It's unclear at the moment exactly what measures China will take, but it seems to be equipping itself with the tools it needs to potentially hit American companies in the same way that the US has hit Huawei. We're not sure at the moment how long Huawei will be able to produce their popular smartphone line, or if they can continue without US supply chains, as they claim they can. They say that they have been stockpiling parts and have enough to continue well into 2020. I said in my last video that the name of the operating system that Huawei have been developing was rumored to have been called Hongmeng. We've had reports recently that this is not the case, with Huawei as recently as a couple of days ago filing patents for a branding called ArcOS, which I have to admit has more of a ring to it than Hongmeng. And if you think about it, the name Arc makes sense. Huawei have only created this software as a contingency in case they were ever stopped from using Android, and have openly said that they would prefer to use Android over their own OS, which isn't really a great sign. If they are to compete, it has to be good. Android and iOS are well developed, so it will take a masterpiece of software engineering to really keep Huawei in the game. Huawei have confirmed that their new operating system will be ready, if necessary, for release in China this autumn and for early 2020 for the rest of the world. Well, the parts they're allowed to use Huawei devices. So, like I said before, this is bad news for us tech fans. This really needs to be resolved as quickly as possible because all it's really doing is making it much harder for tech companies to continue to develop at the same pace. And what does this mean for American companies operating in China, such as Apple? There were rumors last week that China were looking to ban Apple in the same way that the US have banned Huawei. And this new move from Beijing does nothing to dispel that rumor. 
As usual, guys, let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. Do you think that China will really ban Apple? Do you think that Huawei can continue without the US supply lines? Or do you think they're just bluffing? My own personal feeling is that this will be resolved before things get too deep. There are very powerful forces on both sides that don't want this to be happening. So I think eventually some common ground will be found. But that's just my humble opinion. Let me know what yours is in the comments and stay tuned to BTEC for further updates about this. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button, double tap the notifications and smash the like button. If you're on social media, then follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. It's at BTEC or add me on Snapchat, david.btec. Thanks for watching. My name's David and this is BTEC.